Okay, in this video I'm going to walk you through how to set up and print a 3D fastener that's downloaded from McMaster Car or any other industrial uh, website. So what the first thing is to do is to go to McMaster Car, since that's uh, where I'm going to set you up with now. So here I'm looking at McMaster Car website. And when you first actually go to the website, this is what it looks like. So it's McMasterCar.com. And you want to go ahead and select uh, some of the fasteners, uh, fasteners and joining. You can go ahead and select a threaded fastener here. Uh, I'd go ahead and just uh, keep it simple. Uh, select the first option there for screws and bolts and then start looking at all the different options here now each one of these options has additional options down the left side of the page uh, one of the things I did mention was make sure you go for standard inch we do not have a complete set of metric tap and dies so we're gonna go full standard inch right now and as we slide down through let's take a look at the type of uh, object now if you want to go ahead and you want to get fancy we can do that however you have to remember if you're gonna do say a thumb screw or or anything else that's a little different than a standard um, a drive socket, you have to realize that this is going to print standing vertically, uh, and the bottom drive uh, or thumb screw here is going to be sitting on the 3D printer. So we have to think about holding it down as it prints. So given all that, I'm going to go ahead and grab just a simple socket head cap here, socket head screws, and then we're going to then start looking through the process. Now as they come down, you can see this is a socket head type. Now we're going to come down to thread size, and as I move down, these are all the numbered size. There's 8, there's 10, 12, now we get into the quarter inch, 5 sixteenths. I'm going to tell you to go larger than a quarter, probably uh, right around that 3 eighths area is the smallest I'd recommend going as far as printing. Now I'm going to go with the 3 eighths 16 so that I'm with a coarser thread, so the printing will uh, be a little easier. To run through now we're talking about the length how long is this thing going to be so i'm going to come down here and go for a, a full inch so it's not going to be too large but not too small um, that's going to be difficult it won't be difficult to to clean after we print now as we come down through here do we want high profile low profile i'm just going to go with the standard profile all right this is the uh, drive size and then as i come down here i'm not really interested in hardness because i'm not going to have this as a steel piece I'm not really worried about the material nor the finish okay here at the different drive style, I'm just going to go with the standard hex, keeping that the same. The rest of these I'm not going to necessarily, oh, let's go fully threaded. Definitely want this to be fully threaded. So after I've run down this side, I can come over and these are the options. Uh, given what I have here, these are the options. And yeah, we should go with the right hand uh, thread. So given that, here we are coming back over here, alloy steel socket head screws. As I come down, what I need to do next let's just say I'm going to use one of these. Well, here it says for more technical uh, drawings uh, and 3D models, click on the part number. Well, let's go find that part number. This is a fully threaded one inch course. Uh, this is a 9 16th um, head. That's a 3 8 drive side is 5 16th. So let's go take a look at that technical drawing here. And then we click on this product detail. This is where we're going to get the information uh, as a CAD file. So you can see that I have a technical drawing of the threaded fastener. And then I can also get the download information for the, the part. I can actually download the solid model. So I'll pull this down and I want to get the 3D step file. Okay, 3D step files can go into Inventor and then we can work from that point. So 3D step file and then we're going to go ahead and download. So with that coming in, the next thing I can do is now go look for a 3816 nut that will then work with this. So I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate my page. And I'm doing that so I don't lose that page if I need this again. Then I'm going to go back to the site uh, page here that I was just on. And now I can start working backwards out. And I can say, well, let's go in and let's go look for some nuts. Okay, so if I'm going to go up here and put in nuts, now I have all these options. Okay, so again, I can start looking again. I can look and maybe doing a uh, thumb screw here. It's something a little different uh, than just a standard type of fastener here. So I'll go ahead and grab that thumb screw, and now I need to come down, and I'm looking for that same thread description. So as I work my way down to find that mating pair, there's that eighth, sixteen, all right, there's your thread descriptor. Then these are all the options at that point. Now as I come down through, I'm not worried about material, I'm not worried about finish right now, because we're going to print these. Then I come down, I have a thumb, a flange, and a lock. Now, well, let's go with that thumb, because I think I can, can do something there, make that kind of neat. And we're just going to go ahead with a standard standard uh, thread UNC we're going to work with the UNC type here and actually since I said UNC I'm going to jump back in here and take a look this is a 1316 make sure that this is UNC there it is thread type UNC class 3a yep so that's a UNC they will mate okay 
So coming back to UNC, uh, thumb head shot type here. We can go ahead and make it a wing if we wanted to do that there. And then the width across the top here. Let's go ahead and make this uh, an inch and three eighths. Doesn't have to be huge. It'll work. And then the base diameter. Let's see if we can make this. Uh, we'll go 11 sixteenths and we'll go with a three quarter height. Now, as I look at this part, this narrowed it down pretty well to the size part here. So I'm looking at two options here. I'm going to click on that part number. Then they can go get that product detail. Here's the product detail. Eighth inch 13 or eighth inch 16 thread. That's how big the part is going to be when it's fully printed. And coming down here, just making sure everything else uh, UNC, this is all going to work, coarse thread spacing, we're good. So I'm making sure that I'm on my 3D step file and I'm going to download that part. Once those things download, I'm now going to go into Inventor and I'm going to go ahead and open these parts. So I'll go to File and then set up the Open and I'm going to say uh, Open again. And now I got to go to my download folder where they came in. So I'm going to go find that download folder. And as I pop into here, I got to make sure I have all files selected. If I'm just looking for inventor files, they're not going to show up. Okay. But you got to make sure you pull down files of type, hit all files, and then you'll see them. So there's the two step files that came in. I'm going to open the first one here first. This is going to then come up. So these are some options. If we want to convert these models or change some surfaces or anything else, we're going to go straight with a standard um, import. And then you should be able to see this is the fastener that I have here on my screen. And it's got threads on it uh, that have been modeled. So we'll do the same thing again. Uh, we'll go back out here to file, open, and then we'll go ahead and get that zinc plated steel iron wing nut. And again, hit open and hit OK for the import. And then I can spin these around and take a look at those models. So I'm now ready to take these models, save them to my TechEd server. So do save as and take these out of the downloads uh, and take them directly to my Q drive and drop them in there. OK, so that saved up the first one. I stopped the video there for a second. This time I'm going to go ahead and do another save as and I'll take this into my Q drive, but it should be a whole lot faster since I had that set up. So there's my Q drive. We'll go into my stuff here as staff and we'll go into mechanical fasteners and then I have a folder here called 3d printing within a fastener folder that's where I'm going in to drop everything so I have everything nice and tidied up as a foldered system now what I'm ready to do is go to the environment tab at the top of the screen because what I need to do is export this as a 3d print part file now once I hit that uh, environment it takes us into the 3d print environment and I need to hit STL this is going to save a copy of this as an STL to the same location 3D printing file that is on the TechEd server for me. So we'll go ahead and take this particular STL file and save it out. And once that's done, we can hit exit 3D print. We'll go ahead and do the same thing with its mated pair here. So we'll go ahead and do environments, 3D print, and then save that STL out to the same location. Not really worried about the orientation right now, as you can see. This thing's sort of upside down, but we'll fix that in the printing software. All right, now I'm ready to go ahead and get Repeater Host. All right, so to get Repeater Host open, if you haven't uh, opened this up yet before, just come over here to the Windows Start uh, search menu and type in REP, and that'll go ahead and come up with Repeater Host. That is our slicing software. Now, as this thing goes up and loads up, sometimes if you have not run this before, what pops up here? is a tablet on this little printing area come over here to this area and you should be able to hit the little delete button and be able to get rid of that so what we'll do is we'll now go ahead and hit object placement i'm going to hit that plus button and now i'm going to go find those parts that i just saved to the tech ed server as well not students i'm going in here staff and we'll go into my folder we'll go into my mechanical folder going into fasteners 3d printing and then these are my parts so i'm going to go ahead and grab one of these and bring this in now notice how teeny tiny this is well what's set up right now is to bring things in as millimeters well this is coming in as an inch so we need to immediately come over here to the scale button click on that scale button here and then scale this to be 25.4 of an inch so we'll hit enter so that that scales up that's how big this part will actually be when printed on that uh, print bed 
So given that's all set up, we're ready to go here. And I'm going to go ahead and print these things separately uh, in case one pops loose in the printing process. I don't lose them both. So given that set, we're going to go ahead to the slicer and make sure that things are configured properly. So I'm going to click on this configuration button right away. And I'll come in here and look to make sure that my print speed is slow at 40 and fast at 100. Then keeping the rest the same, I come down to here, looking that I want to go ahead and do this at a 2 millimeter layer. That's a standard uh, quick print layer height. Leave all that set or change it if need be. Then you can go to structures, making sure that the shell thickness is at 1.2. That means that a 0.4 millimeter nozzle is going to go around three times to make the outer shell. And same with top and bottom thickness. As I slide on down here, I want to make sure that I have a skirt line count of three and distance can be three to five, somewhere in that area. All right, that's all set and good. Then go to filament. Make sure your print temperature is at 210, bed temperature is at 50, and we're ready to hit save and then hit close. Now, with that all set, we can come over here. All this is good. The print configuration is default right now because we just set the default. Adhesion type is none. We'll see if this sticks without any type of rafting or other type of supports. And then quality type is that point too. Support type none. Speed. Right now I'm going to back this off to say like 80, between 80 and 90, and then keeping my infill about uh, somewhere between 10, 15 to 20, making sure enable cooling is on. Then we'll hit slice with Cura engine, and we will see a sliced object pop up here in just a moment. Now, what we can also do is we can take a look at this, making sure that there's several layers that are showing up per thread. All right, notice that there's say, I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 layers here per thread meaning that there's a good amount of material on each thread to work with. All right, you can also take a look at each layer specifically. So if we wanted to go into show layer range and we wanted to go up single layer by layer, you can see how this part is going to build each layer growing uh, the part all the way up through. All right, now you can take and slide this across. But what's really nice to see is how many layers it takes to make a thread. So you have a really good idea um, from root to crest just how much material is uh, there to build. All right, so with that all set, we're now ready to export or save for the SD print. Make sure that you get a uh, SD card reader and an SD card from a 3D printer. Then you can go ahead and hit save for print. And when I hit save, what I should be able to do is navigate down until I see that USB drive. Go ahead and get into that USB drive down here. Then after selecting that removable drive or USB drive, whatever pops up there, then you're going to go ahead and save this thing. And I'm going to just go ahead and put my initials. And I'm going to put that this is a um, 0.3816. So I know what that is. And I'll put in here bolt. So it's no, I know it's not the nut. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll save this. And then we can come to the bottom. Export, or I'm sorry, eject the mass storage device. And once that says I'm good to take that out of there, we'll go ahead and pull this out and we'll head to the 3D printers. So hopefully this helps you get set up on uh, starting your uh, fastener mate 3D print. You'll do this again for the opposite mate here. Uh, so we'll do the exact same thing for this part so we can 3D print. Set this up in the proper orientation on your Repeater host page and we'll go ahead and print.